Hi, welcome to session two. I want to introduce you in this session to my friend and neighbor, Christy. This is Christy. Hi, everybody. Christy moved in five years ago, almost five years ago, two doors down from us, and she has been the most awesome neighbor ever in lots of different ways. And um, see, she really She's is. She's talking about the hot tub. <laughs> and she has great kids, and they're just wonderful neighbors. But we discovered at our first meeting that Christy also likes to make freezer meals and we decided to try them together and it went so incredibly well that we've been doing them every three months since then and we make enough for both of our families to eat for three months at those sessions. So we do big marathon sessions and you don't have to do that at all. You don't have to do the huge ones, you can just do little mini sessions and I'll be teaching you how to do both types. We're going to tell you today some of our time-saving tips that we've learned over the years and also I introduce you to some of the tools that really make our lives easier when we make our freezer meals. So thanks for joining us. The first tool that I want to introduce you to is the electric can opener. Now obviously you can use a regular manual can opener for freezer meals, but um, we have found that the electric can opener has saved us a ton of time. When we've done our big massive freezer meal sessions, we get really sore thumbs and really sore wrists um, when we're doing the can opener. And we open about 100 cans at least during those massive sessions. So by the end, we're really slow and really sore. And so we just got this um, about eight months ago. So we've only had a few sessions with it and we could not believe the amount of time it saved us. And just to demonstrate that, I'm gonna actually show you today because we're gonna have a race with just this one recipe Christy's going to be on the manual can opener. She's the fastest of the two of us. So she's going to be showing her skills and using the best can opener that we have between the two of us against my electric can opener, which will beat her. But uh, this is just to show you that usually we're going to recommend tools that you'd have already or that are really cheap. This is the one thing that we have found that actually was worth the investment to get just for our freezer meals. Ready? Ready? Three, two, one, go. And I could be adding my seasoning into the bag right now as this goes because you can do more than one thing at a time. Oh, my fingers are nimble. You better hurry up. Now my wrists are so <laughs> So as you can see, I barely beat Christy with the cans, but this is our first um, can opening of the day. So she was fast and not sore. And also I could have been doing other things as the can opener was doing all the work for me. I could have been going over to the sink and draining my black beans and draining my corn and adding the taco seasoning and the beer can to the bag. So my entire meal could be finished by the time she finished opening her last can. And while it might just seem like a few seconds difference, over the course of a day, and our record is doing 137 meals. So over the course of 137 meals, you can see how those seconds add up. And more importantly, just um, that your wrist isn't sore, your hand's not sore, you're not feeling as tired. Um, and even one of my daughters loves to help when we use the electric can opener because she thinks it's really fun. So she's 10 and this is awesome for her. And then we have to do even less. So for draining your cans, we just use um, something like this in the sink. So it's just a little colander. Ours has measuring and whatever on it, but yours doesn't have to be fancy. You can drain just with the lid or in a regular colander. So um, I'm just going to drain the two cans from the chicken taco soup that needed draining. So that's the corn and then I'm going to toss that in the bag. And then the black beans need to be rinsed. So I'm just going to put them into the same colander because it's all the same recipe and then just run some water over them. Make sure I get it all out of the can there. 
and give that a shake and throw that in the bag too. So now we're just going to put the soup together and this soup uh, is great in the crock pot and you can add um, a tetra pack of chicken broth to it on the day of cooking which makes it into a soup or if you leave it the way that it is then my kids like to have it in tortillas and have it that way and just add some cheese and that kind of thing. So we're just adding all of the cans and then we're going to add taco seasoning and we keep the teaspoon, like just a tiny little teaspoon in the taco seasoning for the whole day that we do freezer meals because we're using it so often for different recipes and it's just a tiny little time saver that just having that in there. And we also keep um, a tablespoon in the dry onion soup mix and that's a time saver as well. And then um, we keep like a measuring cup of a one cup in our ground beef and we keep a half a cup in our onions, our chopped onions. So just those tiny little things where we're not having to run around and find the right measurers just make a little bit of a difference. So, yeah. We always know where to find it. Exactly. Then we're going to add the last thing is a can of beer and that just helps to tenderize the chicken so that you can shred it really easily when, after it's cooked in the crock pot. So this is a fairly large bag and I'll show you a tip a little bit later of a way to keep the bags open for you so that nothing spills. Just close your bag and get out the excess air and you're done. Chicken taco soup. So I'm just going to teach you some of the tools that we use that most of them you'll already have in your kitchen and these are things that can just help make freezer meals a lot easier. So obviously you're going to want to use bags. We use bags instead of those trays, the disposable trays that you can buy because they take up so much less space in the freezer and when you're making a lot of meals you really, space is of a premium. So we use the large size bag for the main meal and then sometimes there's meals that require an extra component like pasta or um, shredded cheese, things like that. And so we'll use these medium sized bags to add on. And the way that we do that actually is with a stapler. So we just staple the bags together. And then of course you have to remember to take the staples out before cooking. But uh, here is one that we made yesterday. So this is just beef hash. So the main recipe in the bag. And then on the back, you've got your shredded cheese that when you make this meal, you're going to put the cheese on top and put it in the oven. So this way it can still lay really flat. It's not taking a lot of room in your freezer. And then the day of baking, you're not missing anything because everything you need for this meal is right here. So another thing that I wanted to show you with the bags is when you're making a meal that's more liquid, so a soup or something that's just quite liquidy, you can use um, a container, just a regular juice container. You can buy fancy things that hold your freezer bags up, but we don't really see the need for that when you can have a juice container and just flip the lid over your bag over it like that and then you've got your bag held up uh, for you while you add the liquid into the bag, so your soup or whatever. And the same thing for a container like this. You can just open your bag into this container and you've got it stabilized for you to add your liquid into it. Measuring cups are obviously something that you'll need. So we've got ones that we use for liquid and ones that we use in the hamburger. We keep a one cup. In the onions, we keep a half a cup. And Christy brings her measuring cups with her when she comes because it's something that we're using a lot during the day. And the more we have, the less we have to wash dishes. So that's just a little time saver as well. Um, spatulas are pretty self-explanatory. Um, the can opener earlier, I showed you the electric can opener. And so you'll need a can opener of some sort. This is just a handheld one. You'll need m lots of cutting boards because of course you don't want to be cutting your chicken on the same board that you're cutting your vegetables on and that kind of thing. So 
this we have Christy bring hers over and we've got lots of cutting boards. Um, measuring spoons, like I said earlier, we keep some of our measuring spoons in the seasonings that we're gonna be using a lot of. And then we have lots of extras. And bowls, you'll need some large bowls because if you're making meals where it's four meals at one time and mixing them all together, then you'll need the large bowl before you section them out into bags. Kitchen scissors are handy to have for opening packages and also things like um, chopping your herbs or even your bacon we've done with the kitchen scissors before. And a Sharpie marker or permanent marker is really handy for having, for adding things that you've forgotten onto your labels and also for adding the date to your labels. So if you want to know when the freezer meals were made, you can easily see at a glance. And also what we use is good shoes. It's really important and makes you a lot less sore if you're wearing good runners or a good quality shoe that's going to help your hips and your feet to get through standing on them for a long time. And then the thing that we find that helps us probably the most in terms of keeping our energy up is to have music playing. So when Christy and I do our meals together, we've got a really great playlist that we use and we actually have a song that's always our very last song. When we're working on our last meal, we play jump around and we jump around. <laughs> so it's just the music is good for keeping our energy up and just making it a little bit more fun. So those are some of the tools that we use to get through our freezer meal days. So another tool that you might want to use is to wear an apron like Christy has. Christy always wears an apron and I never do. And so this is just how we do our freezer meals. You can choose what's best for you. We're just going to walk you through a few more time-saving tips. One of them is to clean as you go. Just um, make sure that you stay on top of the dishes so that they don't get to the point of being overwhelming or where you can't go any further because everything is dirty. And another really, really, really big time saver is to do one ingredient at a time. So if you're making chicken recipes, to do them in the dump recipe style, which we're going to be showing you step by step by step in a later video. But just if you're working with chicken or beef or salmon or shrimp or whatever it is that you're working with, if you're just working with that one ingredient all at the same time and making five or 10 or 20 recipes, all of that one main ingredient, and then just adding things as you go, that's a huge time saver. We discovered that by accident a little bit, didn't we? Because sometimes we would change it up and be like, oh, I'm gonna make beef this time, and oh, I'm gonna make the salmon, and I'll get the ham out. And one night, I just remember doing chicken, doing chicken, and, and every time I finished the chicken, you had a sauce ready for it. So I just kept doing chicken, and you just kept making the sauce, and bam, all our chicken was done, and it was the fastest thing ever. So that's how we kind of discovered that. It was, it was an accident. And it saves a ton of time. A ton of time. Uh, another little tip is just to set stations out. And so this is a station that's set out for a recipe called pizza casserole. So you've got your pasta already in bags, ready to be stapled onto your main bag. Um, the ham is already cubed and ready to go. And it's actually, this particular bowl has measures on it. So it's actually eight cups, which is exactly what we need for to make four of these and then they each have one can of mushrooms so you've got your mushrooms and your spices even and um, this one also needs cheese but things like that and the ham as well you would keep in the fridge until you're ready to cook so um, you would just set out your stations with just the dry ingredients and then bring these types of things out when you're completely ready to go so that's um, how you would set out stations and when we do the big meals we will lay out stations all around the kitchen and have different stations that we're working at and that way you're also not in each other's way and stepping on each other's toes. The other benefit that I find of that is because I'm coming here to her house I don't always know which cupboard to look in and know where to find things. So it blew my mind the first time I came here for freezer meals and she had stations laid out and I thought this is brilliant. I am a big believer in prep ahead of time and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Think about painting a room. If you're going to paint a room, 90% of your work is going to be the, the prep. It's going to be the sanding and the 
prepping your walls and filling your cracks. And then the painting is the easy part. It's the same thing for freezer meals. If you have your onions done and if you have all of your beef browned and you have all of these things set out, it really is just bang, 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 that easy to do. Another way that we save time is by um, using minced garlic in a jar instead of actually peeling and mincing our garlic. So it's just, it's a tiny little thing, but like I said, the tiny things add up. We go through a ton of it, so it really does save a lot of time. And when we make freezer meals, and again, some things are going to be specific to you. So if you want to change things and if you're someone that follows the recipe to a T and you need to have exact measurements then that's okay there's nothing wrong with that but it does save a lot of time to care a little less about exact measurements so when we assemble our freezer meals there's a lot of sort of throwing in bags and guessing and, um, and eyeballing yeah and a lot of times you'll find that with making one sauce and putting it into four bags of chicken that you have laid out. You have to scoop it out. You can't always get them perfectly even. There's gonna be somebody that goes home with a little more sauce and that's okay. There's things that you can do for your specific family needs. We found that the taco recipe, taco meat recipe that we were using was, ended up being a lot left over for our family. I only have two kids, she has seven kids. They were using all of theirs and we weren't using all of ours. So an easy thing I found to do was I would just take that recipe and split it instead of into a big one, I would split the big one into two little ones. I went home with four taco meats instead of two, but it just worked for our family better. I have another mom friend of mine whose husband works away a lot, so it's just her and her boys. I did freezer meals with her one time and that's where I got the idea. She said, we're not gonna eat all of that. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing in these smaller measurements. And that just worked really great for her family. In our next video, we're going to walk you through some huge time savers. And so thanks so much for watching and uh, hopefully we can keep learning together.